Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company and I am delighted today to be here with Edita Sitar from Laundry Basket, Basket Quilts. Is that how you say your name, Edita Sitar? Yes, it's Edita, but if, Edita. You, yeah, if you cannot pronounce my name, you can call me Sweetheart well, Doll or There honey. you go, that's perfect. Yes. Well, doll. <laughs> Perfect. So um, Edita has designed for us, exclusively here at Missouri Star, a block of the month, and this is it right here. So uh, one of the cool things that she does is uh, these are all, you get them like this, cut, pre-cut, they're ready to go. So we want to show you how to do this and how to make this, and Edita's going to walk it right, right through it. Thank you so much for having me, and oh, it gosh. was a pleasure to design this quilt for you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It's, it's a pleasure. I mean, I've admired what you do for so long, and it's just delightful to have you here at Missouri Star with us. And this is so cool that you did this for us. Thank really you. Neat. So the quilt is designed from our collection called Sokoya from Endover, and the fabrics are just beautiful. They are and beautiful. I, I'm yeah. just going to have to touch them for a minute. Yeah, go touch. we got to touch yeah. them. But then put them away and pay attention to me. <laughs> okay. I'm going to teach you how to make a block. <laughs> okay, I will, I will. <laughs> oh my gosh, so, they are beautiful. Yeah, Absolutely there's beautiful. some big print that is That's just cool. perfect for the border and yeah. yeah, beautiful pieces. So every month you will receive a package. In the package you have it in a bag all of the pieces that you need for your applique. In the back you find a, a background. Inside the background there is a layout that it's folded. So this is what it yes. looks like, like yep. this right here. Yep. And I have one open. So you have the layout, you have your background, and all of the pieces. So what I start with is I take my light table, I place it on my table, and I place my layout right on it. I look at where there is an X right through the middle, it gives me the sign where I have to place and center my background. I take my background and press it, and your background is cut quarter inch bigger all the way around than required size, so that way after applying, you have room to trim it and square things out in case something has fray or has That's pulled a, good idea. a little bit. Yeah. So it's just a quarter inch bigger all the way yes. around, and so you're we, just gonna kind of center it over the yep, I'm paper? Gonna fold it in half. I'm gonna fold it in half again right here. Make the little the little yes. X. Yeah. Brilliant. And then I'm gonna match it up. And I think this will go a little oh, bit lighter. Perfect. There we go. Yeah, I need my glasses now. Super. And it coincident notice it that the top of the paper and the bottom of the paper holds with the edges of your fabric. This looks really nice. Yep, we're right in the center. And what I like to do, I use those little clips. Oh, okay. Yeah. Guess we're just gonna clip yep, them on there. Clip it. Do you do like do you do them all the way around or just a couple? No, just top couple. and bottom. Top and the bottom. All right. Oh, you're doing so good. See, I'm doing so good. I can clip. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and now we're gonna pull the pieces and I spill them right in front of me on my table. And I usually start up with the pieces that I can notice it. There is a dotted line from this uh, leaf going under the stem. So okay, I'm gonna let, let's take see if we this. can look at this a little bit. Yes. Oh, so right here, you'll yeah. see, maybe uh, maybe we can see on the top cam this yeah. little dash, dash, dash. It symbolized that this piece needs to go under it goes the next. Under. Okay. Yeah. And very simply, I find the edge, a nice a long one, and I just crease it. And I wait that the paper separates with the piece. Oh my goodness. Yeah, then I put my fingers into it. And notice it's a little sticky because we have a steam seam two on it. Yeah. And I'm gonna start by placing right there and lay next to the lines. And I can tell you're super First piece excited. Applique. about it. done. Yes. <laughs> Would you like to try one? I do. You'll have to tell me where it goes. And what it's nice I'm, about this, all the colors, everything is matched exactly to the original quilt. So your picture when you finish your block will be exactly the same. This crease and right waiting here. thing is yes. really cool. That actually really worked. Yeah. So they Isn't stay this? in place. Yeah, stay oh, in place. Wait, mine's See? a little off. But that's okay. You can pull it back. I'm a and beginner. Put it. I'm a beginner at this kind of thing, so. I like that. I like being with beginners. <laughs> oh, now it's off yes. the other way. Wait a minute. I can do this. I promise. You can do it. There we go. Yeah. And now I'm going to take the stem. Notice it. I gently just creased it and pulled the paper away. And I'm going to start placing on one end and sticking it down, following the lines and creating a really cute little stem right there. Oh, I think you're that ready is... for a flower. Oh. I got one with a bird. Oh, I got one yeah, with a flower. Yeah, this fabric is so beautiful from Sequoia. So it's we're just wonderful. bending? Yep, creasing, just bend it. And Remember, wait. paper up. Oh, paper up. Paper up. Okay. 
bend it. Crease. Oh, there. You perfect. See? That's much yeah. easier. Paper yeah. up. So remember that. Yeah, paper up. All right, here's one right here. Super. And I'm going to place one as well. And we have flowers. Then we follow out with circle. All right. And soon paper enough, up. we're going to have the whole block done. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I can, we can finish this like right now. Oh, I'm so excited about it. <laughs> Let's just do it. Yes. And right, I always up. lay some pieces just to see the coloring. Mm -hmm. I like to grade it from dark going to light because, you know, on the top of your flowers, the coloring is always a little lighter. I okay, just... now do you worry there's like three of these that are the same? Uh, so do we worry about that? There, you different? have options, yeah. Oh, okay, that's good. Yeah. Those can go so there. So we have some for the center, then the lighter one, it ties it nicely together if you do that and it kind of follow through the picture. And it doesn't really matter uh, where they go. And look at I, how quickly now you know how to peel them. You learn this I technique. Know. Yeah, if you keep that paper on the top and just crease the edge, you don't have to scratch with a needle, do anything else. It just that is that's That's an awesome yeah. trick right there because that takes, um, that takes a lot of time. Yeah. I do spend a lot of time trying to oh, like crease, so paper up. Up. here yep and bend and just wait and where does this tiny guy go I think he goes right oh, he there goes up here. yes and you can always lift the paper and double check out G oh, G is. is a small circle pink oh and red. It's, look at look at yeah because you have a chart right here how many stands and what you need and if oh, you ever decide to make more than just one block you know how many pieces to trace it or do it yourself because we also included a pattern for this block of the month where all the pieces are in it as well. So you can trace your own and cut yes. more. Yes. That's, yeah. that's awesome. Yep. Today I'm spoiling you. You are <laughs> spoiling me. <laughs> yeah. And I, love I, it. I pay attention to some of the directions of the fabric. I uh -oh. like my flowers to go up. Mm. And that's and I like better the... I better repeal this one and turn it up. Yeah. There we go. You want it to look nice notice. and pleasing to your eye. Sometimes you don't notice as you're putting the pieces down, then you walk by it. This is nice because you can lift it. Mm -hmm. Oh, this one we didn't peel it, so uh -oh. let's finish. Yep, then you know which one we're done. And what I do is I would lift it up, look at it on my design wall, and I can check that everything is pleasing me. Good, I'm ready to press. I'm going to take those two off. Just grab the block, mm -hmm. move over to my ironing so board. So are we done with this little table yep, right now? we're done right, with this it. Off. We're going to clean this up a little bit. All right, so we're ready to iron. Yes. And, and our iron's right over there. Yep, perfect. And what I love it is we don't have water in no the iron. No water, okay. Nice and dry, that's what we need. And what you have to remember is on the package right here, it gives you a direction. Fuse in place with dry iron, cotton settings, three seconds, do not overpress. The Oh, Don't that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So because I tend to think the longer I hold it, the better it's going to yeah. be. But this it's total three opposite. seconds. The more you hold, the uh, fusible melts away, and the, the pieces okay. will fall off. So and what you have to less remember: is more. yep, so lift, one, two, three. push down, lift push down. You need to do this because if you're sliding the iron, you can pick the pieces sure. and we don't want to do that. So just lift it and look what I'm going to do. I just did a few seconds. I'm going to flip it mm -hmm. and now from the back, one, two, three, done. Okay. Less is better. If during the process of stitching something is coming off, I can go ahead and repress it. Okay. But if I press too much, that's I, interesting. Yeah. Well, that's good yeah. to know. And so all and that information is right here. Yeah. On, it comes on every pack. Yes. To remind you. Yes. So yeah. on the back of the package, you have directions, size of your block. Remember, you're going to be trimming the block to the right size because your background is cut a little bit bigger. So once you receive the pattern, you know exactly what you need to do for now. Just make your beautiful blocks and focus on light, gentle pressing. And I'm going to give you a little tip. When I finish pressing, I let my block to cool off and then I take it this way and I roll it and I can see if any of my pieces are popping. So the opening, if they're not, it means that I have pressed it really good and I can oh go goodness. ahead. Yeah. Because you I have to right say, I wasn't sure they were really stuck on there, but yeah. now seeing that, yeah. you yeah. passed the test. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> so the next thing that we're gonna focus so on. So I'm just looking at these stars, and stitching. they're here. Yeah. That's so cute. That's yeah. just darling. Isn't that sweet? Yeah. Really so sweet. every block have a little bit of a different design. And Same I, kind of stem, but yeah. then this top is so 
you know, just fun and whimsical and we add the words so that way it gives a little bit of a special message with every yeah. block as you go through the blocks and through the year of uh, six months of making them. And you could even, um, like if you wanted to, you wouldn't have to put the words, or you could make a whole quilt just kind of with one block or something, could Yes. You? Yeah. Or a pillow. Yeah, this would we be actually cute. have a directions for just one block that yeah. it's framed. So you could make a small wall hanging and change them on your wall in a kitchen or oh, your dining sure. room. This and would be so yeah. cute, like Valentine's Day. Yeah. And so perfect. next step that we have to go through is we're going to decide on our uh stitches for applique. Okay. So I'm going to talk to you about this for just a moment. There are multiple ways of applique and I prepare some options for you. So now we have our block and uh, what we need to do is decide there uh, this is this calls fusible applique okay. because we use fusible webbing. Mm -hmm. Now fusible applique breaks to two different appliques, raw edge or finish edge fusible mm -hmm. applique. So if you love finish edge, you need to put a stitch around the edges. And I brought some examples right here. You can use a cotton thread in a bobbin and you use invisible thread. And there are a variety of invisible threads and there are... Um, Wonderful invisible threads, monofill invisible threads, uh, polyester, nylon, choose your favorite. You know, it used to be invisible thread was terrible because it melted, it didn't yes. hold together, but it's so yeah. much better now, isn't so it? So much better, and also you using a cotton thread in a bobbin, and I always use a nice beige cotton thread uh -huh. so it hides, and when I'm pressing my pieces, I would press from the back. Right. I would not touch my thread okay. with Good the idea. iron on this side. If I press from the front, I would put a pressing cloth. Okay. So I'm using a small zigzag, Cotton thread in a bobbin, invisible thread on the top, embroidery needle, because embroidery needle is made for fusible webbing, so it's going to give you really good results. Macrotex needles is always uh, also mm -hmm. good, but sometimes it grabs too much of the fusible and it, it start, um like goo gap oh, okay. on a needle. Okay. If that ever happens to you, wipe it with alcohol wipes. It works wonderful. Okay, perfect. So that would be our first stitch. So the invisible. Yes, invisible. If you don't want to do invisible, you love cotton threads, and you have such a lovely selection from Missouri Star of threads mm -hmm. that you can use around the edges, you can again do the same light, uh, like a beige thread on mm -hmm. the back, and match colors. And then just switch your top yes. thread. Yes. So if I have a red, look at how beautifully this matches. Mm -hmm. If I have a green, I can switch to the greens. With the black branch, I can add the black thread and switch and uh, do that. Perfect. There is also another stitch that we could use it and that one calls a blanket stitch and mm -hmm. many of our machines come with that yeah, stitch. They do. It's just lovely. If I'm doing this stitch, I like to accent my applique. So I make sure that my thread shows what I'm doing because I want to show off my stitches. So for uh, the pinks, I would still use a little bit more red to mm -hmm. show off the stitches okay. and then emphasize that. What's your favorite? My favorite is raw edge applique. Okay. So fusible applique breaks to two. Finish edge, raw edge. And that's the last stitch I want to show you. Why do I like this? Because I can do things really fast. It's fast, yes. Yeah. And it gives me a little bit more artsy feel to my quilt. Uh -huh. and, um, and I really don't have like a favorite favorite because I use my stitch depends on what I'm going to do with my quilt. Okay. If I'm going to do wall hanging, it would be raw edge. If I want to stitch something for a table runner, I would do invisible. Because it has to be washed. Yes. And you want to if I'm together. doing a baby quilt, cotton on the front, cotton on the back, because okay. your fa the baby's face would touch it. We don't okay, want a plastic thread. That's really if good information. If I want to show off stitches and do something super special, I would add that black blanket stitch. So I keep going back and forth between the stitches. And sometimes in a quilt, I can use multiple stitches. Right. Depends how difficult the design is. So around the circles, you're going to find it that you have to stop and go more often. Mm -hmm. So you're going to shy away from doing something around. You maybe want to do just the raw edge, just stitch one aid on the inside. It will hold your pieces in place and create a beautiful project. We did ours is um, it's a tiny zigzag mm -hmm. and it's uh, 
it's the invisible thread because it, it's it's a wall hanging. Yes. You know, yeah. uh, and so it will hang up and it's not going to be washed a ton, but I, I, yeah, it But looks even great. with washing, when you wash the quilt, the edges fray just gently, mm -hmm. but it gives a little bit different flavor to it's the quilt. True. It's yeah. true. Yeah, that's really pretty. Yeah. And uh, it, this works great because you can do it over the weekend, enjoy yourself and do a really fun project. So once we choose our stitches, now we are ready to stitch around the edges. Okay. And next step will be, we have a little word that we're gonna add an embroidery oh, okay. to it. Perfect. So now I'm gonna use my uh, light table one oh, okay. more time. Let me grab that. There we go. And you can leave the embroidery for the <laughs> last part Oops, and do me. all of the blocks the same time. And in your pattern, you're going to find a simple design for a stem stitch. That's the one I used. And what I do is I place my uh, block back on a light table and with a pencil, and I use a saw line pencil, I'm going to draw lines to get my design where it's going to go. And I have a needle right here waiting for me already. So I just would draw very gentle. You don't want to go too dark and just draw it all of the lines really nice. And now we are ready to turn the light box off and do a little bit of embroidery. And there are simple stitches. I did a three strength of a thread and in your first package was your first block of the month. This thread was included. Oh, cool. Yes. And so it's you gonna, get the thread. That's really yeah. neat. Very yeah, nice. it's going to be matching thread for all of the month. This thread is from Aurofil. It's a lovely quality. And I break a small um, uh, Just a length. piece, a small yeah. piece. I usually measure from my finger to my elbow. Okay. You don't want to go any longer than that because it starts tying in the knots and you get frustrated because it's too long. So from your finger to your elbow, that's the length of the thread that you should use it. And I make a lovely little knot right there in the beginning and I'm gonna place this right there place it right here super and I don't even use a hoop I just gently hold it and make little slip stitches just like the the, uh, the direction and just tiny grabbing just about less than an eighth and another do you see loop yep. you always keep your thread up to the top to the stitch top, back toward and it and stitch and gently pull it you don't want to pull too tight because it's gonna uh, crinkle your fabric sure and cinch it a little bit so you want to be nice and gentle another cute little stitch my grandmother was an embroiderer no. and she just did amazing work yes yeah, see that's we're bringing the tradition back a little handwork so look at it in one block we have that laser cut pieces all this new innovative stuff and we're going back I'm in going time back to the handwork, reading yeah. our messages faith hope love and stitching and taking some time and enjoying the journey oh, i perfect. think that's so special that is really so now, sweet i think we're ready to lay out our quilt all i right. have prepared our blocks we'll clean off our area here and I just want to bring to your attention, when I do my appliques, I many times make myself a little swatch where I practice my stitches and I write on this piece of fabric what the settings. so I can remember that first month, oh, I use this. And then second month, I come back, oh, this is my favorite. I'm going to use this again. And then I don't have to reset my machine. That's a great idea. Yeah, you know, the whole, good world, tip. the whole world doesn't do that. We just, we just go yeah. through here 20 times, sewing 20 different things. Waste a lot of time. You're yeah. smart, girl. We're set it and reset the machine. And many times when I work on a project, I slip this with my pattern. That's a great so idea. So that way I know where it is. And Everybody, that's know. smart. You should, yeah. you should do your stitch, write the yeah. number down. Because I'm and, forever. I'm just like, yeah. was it this? Was it this? What was it? You know, and I had that's a, one of helpful. my machines. I took a permanent marker and marked it on my machine. What were my favorite stitches? Sure. Good so, idea. Because it goes with my machine all the time. Okay. So just another tip. When I do my blocks, I keep them with my layouts. Why? Because they stay nice and stiff. So when it's time to lay out our quilt, oh, I pull the layout away. My block is not crinkled. Another block, and we have just done all of them. Look at how much fun they look. They now we adorable. have to follow the layout on the wall. So 
So we, we started with peace pain. on the bottom. Yes. And joy. I'm going to let you do that. Peace and joy. Faith is up here in the top corner. Let's move this over here. We maybe don't have enough room for all of them. We're close. Close. Dream. Oh, I love this block. Did you notice this one? The, oh, with yeah, the hearts? The law, so yeah, the So cute. Dream is right here. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Okay. So this gives us, and I hope goes right here. It gives us hope. There we yes. go. We got hope, last of all. Yeah. So notice it how the blocks have red, 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 blue, blue, blue. So it's Very lovely nice. layout. If you don't agree with it, you can change things around. If you want a two joys, please mm -hmm. do it. And uh, uh, but I laid this this way. And now we have to start by making our pieces for our quarter square triangles right here for this little Ohio star that it's sitting right here. And what I do is here, I'm going to move joy for a minute yeah. so you can work right here. Mm -hmm. What I do is I cut my fabrics first and you will find the directions for cutting for the border, inner border, for all your pieces in the pattern with your last month. And with the last month you will receive all of these fabrics for the blue stars, your sashings, your invisible inner border and your border right here and your binding as well. Oh, the binding even. Yes. That's very nice. So we're going to be making a unit called quarter square triangles, also known as broken dishes. So we have cut them already for ourselves. And what I always do is I start by sewing them into a chain like this. So once I have them, I fold them right sides together and then I sew them this way. A cute low chain. Yeah. This allows me to take this to my ironing board, open it up beautiful, and cr press it. Okay. And all Perfect. the seams are going the same way. And I've done already some of those. Look at those are already pressed. I'm gonna place them together and now I'm gonna match that seam in the middle, put a lovely pin and start sewing from here straight down. If you worry about the center, you can always start from the center out and from the center out again. All right. And my favorite part of it is where I take this piece and open, this one is already sewn for us, open, pull this gently apart, look at this, and I get a really cute square right here <laughs> in the center. That's cute. <laughs> okay, and I pressed one, already very trim cool. trim 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 i have a nice unit this unit is gonna end up to be a part of our sashing and our borders right here notice in a border in a border i have a different color so some of the pieces going to have this darker brown and all your directions in a pattern tell oh, yeah. you yeah i switched the colors around just tiny bit to give you like a hidden invisible inner border. So some of them gonna be this way, some of them going to be just with the light, ready, set, go. Now we can lay this quilt out once we make those pieces. Alrighty. So. We're so close. Yeah, you and me are going through this really fast. I got us ready. You did, yes. you came with everything ready. Mm. So I'm going to let you lay out some of it. We're going to lay out this side of the quilt. Okay. So go ahead and notice and it these, that some of them... And these go in yeah. this way, don't they? Let's yes. See. No, this way. This way they're going to be low stars. Yeah. Right here. Right oh, here. Oh, on the sides. And then here. Okay. Yeah. We're building a low stars. And they go here. Yeah. And this guy goes where? In the middle. Yep. Yep. And then here. And one more. I need one more. Please. And notice it. So now oh, notice wait, this you guy. have, yes, so he's <laughs> going to belong on to the outside. I was almost fired right there. She almost, she almost said, nope, nope. There we go. So we start laying those out. So cute. And creating a really nice layout for the quilt. Look at that little square mm -hmm. and here. So look at what's happened with the sashing and we have a long and a, this uh, for the sides. So and what cute. I do, yeah, once I have my blocks completed, I lay out my whole quilt and then I proceed with making it. This is in a corner. We're running out of space on this table. So make sure you have a big design wall to do this. 
right? It's so fun though. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know what's so interesting about this is that these are show-stopping panels. They're just beautiful. Mm-hmm. But when you put this in, it just adds so it much. It really does. You Not know, as just, look at quickly you have this. Yep. It just brings it just so, adds much, so yeah. much. Yeah. It's look just at beautiful. what happened. And if you have finished your block, square them out beautifully to the right size. The pattern gives you all the directions for how to square them up, lay out, prepare your little broken dishes unit to make those cute little Ohio stars for the setting pieces for your quarter stone. And now lay out your whole quilt and all that you have to do is sew this to this, this to this, this to this, this to this. And you are Start ready to sewing go. rows, yeah. rows together and then adding a border to the quilt, what is our last step would be that finishing touch. And this border is that's absolutely a, a beautiful, gorgeous fabric where we just add that right here. And when I sew long pieces like this, I make sure I do a lot of pinning. Yeah. Yeah, you want measure, to cut it to right size, and pin, pin, pin. Yeah. So this is our block of the month. It's called Harmony. It's a six-month block of the month, right? Correct. Yes. Yes. And uh, it just went together super easy. It looks adorable. They're going to learn some new skills and things like that. Uh, I mean, it's just a great idea. Yes. I love that you included the binding. That yes. was really fun. It matches beautifully with the stars. And in your last month, you will receive the border, all of the fabrics that you need to finish your quilt. Focus on your block, learn your technique, enjoy it with a little faith, hope, joy. You maybe are having something new to learn and enjoy in your kitchen or on your wall. Thank you so much, Edita. Thanks for coming. You're welcome. And we hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the Harmony Quilt from the Missouri Star Quilt Company.